Thank you for joining with me. We are reading A Course in Miracles, Workbook for Students, Part 2 of the Workbook, Section 13. What is, I forgot, I think it's What is the Miracle, yes, my brain is frozen. Lesson 344, today I learned the law of love that I, that what I give my brother is my gift to me. This is your law, my father, not my own. I did not understand what giving means and thought to save what I desired for myself alone. Footnote 161. I did not understand, in other words, that giving leads to gain, not loss. As a result, I held back from giving and instead thought to save what I desired for myself alone. And as I looked upon the treasure that I thought I had, I found an empty place where nothing ever was or is or will be. Who can share a dream and what can an illusion offer me? Yet he whom I forgive will give me gifts beyond the worth of anything on earth. Let my forgiven brothers fill my store with heaven's treasures, which alone are real. Footnote 162. This is a reference to the treasure house, also called the store, storehouse, and treasury, in which are stored the gifts of God that we have given our brothers and that they have given us. The above passage pictures our brothers filling our store with gifts beyond the worth of anything on earth. In contrast, when we try to hoard conventional treasures for ourselves, our earthly storehouse becomes, for all intents and purposes, an empty place where nothing ever was or is or will be. And thus is the law of love fulfilled, 163, Romans 13, 8, 10. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is f the fulfilling of the law. In the above passage, the law of love, that what I give my brother is my gift to me, is fulfilled when I f give forgiveness to my brothers and they return that forgiveness to me. And thus your son arises and returns to you. How near we are to one another as we go to God. How near is he to us. How close the ending of the dream of sin and the redemption of the Son of God. And now I will read the commentary by Alan Watson. What if we realize that only what we give away to others will be left to us in the end? What if we recognize that everything we try to hold on to ourselves alone will be lost? How would that change the way we live? The lesson is referring to our gifts of love and forgiveness more than to anything physical, although the physical often symbolizes that love. Yet he whom I forgive will give me gifts beyond the worth of anything on earth. The Course teaches us that everything is an idea, and ideas, when given away, only increase. We lose nothing in the giving. On the other hand, when we try to save our affection for ourselves alone, we wind up empty-handed. And as I look upon the treasure that I thought I had, I found an empty place where nothing ever was or is or will be. Only what is shared is real, because only oneness is reality and separateness is illusory. We can't have something for ourselves alone because we are not alone. How do we arise and return to God? Through forgiving our brothers. Each one we welcome fills my store with heaven's treasures which alone are real. There was a short poem I learned back in my fundamentalist Christian days that seemed applicable here. Only one life twill soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. Only the love is real, only the love is eternal. How near we are to one another as we go to God, how near he is to us. 
How close is the ending of the dream of sin and the redemption of the Son of God? I don't think that as yet we have any idea how inextricably we are all linked to one another or how near we really are to one another. Each time you choose to listen to God's voice instead of your ego, in however little way, you help me on my way to God. Each time I open my eyes to Christ's vision, you see a little better. You and I and all of us are really one. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts, says Lesson 19. If through my willingness to see another as whole today, I help her or him on the way to God by reminding them of who they really are, I have literally helped myself equally because our minds are joined. How many opportunities await each of us today? How eager I should be to spread forgiveness over all the world. And now I will lead us into meditation. Today I learn the law of love that what I give my brother is my gift to me. This is your law, my father, not my own. I did not understand what giving means and thought to save what I desired for myself alone. And as I looked upon the treasure that I thought I had, I found an empty place where nothing ever was or is or will be. Who can share a dream? And what can an illusion offer me? Yet he whom I forgive will give me gifts beyond the worth of anything on earth. Let my forgiven brothers fill my store with he heaven's treasures, which alone are real. Thus is the law of love fulfilled, and thus your Son arises and returns to you. Today I learn the law of love, that what I give my brother is my gift to me.
so much for joining with me in the meditation for lesson 344. Today I learn the law of love that what I give my brother is my gift to me. And now we will read Alan Watson's commentary on what is a miracle, paragraph 2, sentences 3 through 5. A miracle inverts perception which was upside down before and thus it ends the strange distortions that were manifest. So the perceptions we have learned from the ego are upside down. A miracle inverts those perceptions and makes them right side up again. Perhaps this is a reference to the way that physical sight works. In physical sight, the image projected by the lens of our eyes upon the retina is actually upside down. The mind literally, literally learns to see the upside down image as right side up. In an experiment in which people were given glasses to wear that inverted the image so that it was right side up on the retina, the mind saw everything as upside down. After a number of days, however, the mind adjusted and saw everything again as the right way. When the glasses were removed, people now saw things as being upside down. The perception that what I give I lose, for instance, is entirely upside down. True perception shows me that what I give I keep. We perceive what is false, but our minds have learned to interpret it as truth. We see illusions and think them real. We believe that reality is the illusion. We fear love and love fear. We think guilt is good and innocence is guilty. A miracle inverts all this. It corrects our perception, inverting our understanding. The change in perception is what ends the distortion in what is being manifested, that is, showing up in form. Now is perception open to the truth. When the miracle inverts my perception and ends the distortion, I am again capable of perceiving the truth or its accurate reflection. Until perception is corrected, truth cannot enter. Now is forgiveness seen as justified. This is perhaps the most dramatic reversal, reversal of all. One of the most radical ideas in the Course is that forgiveness is justified. If we think of forgiveness at all from the ego perspective, we think of it as someone's being let off the hook for no reason, out of the goodness of our hearts. The Course says that there is, a, is every reason to forgive. It is fully justified. What is unjustified is judgment, condemnation, and anger. This is simply not something that can be learned or arrived at through logic, though it is entirely logical. When we see our condemnation of someone as just, I'm sorry, when we see our condemnation of someone as just, that is just how we see it. Trying to reason ourselves into seeing it differently doesn't work. Nor can we should ourselves into it. If we try to force ourselves to forgive while seeing guilt, we will feel as though we are being untrue to ourselves. When you give your perception to the Holy Spirit and ask to see as He sees, He gives you His perception. It simply springs into the mind. Suddenly, you literally no longer see any reason to condemn and every reason to give love. Your anger, perfectly justified a moment ago, now seems unthinkable. It is like the shift that occurs in looking at magic eye illustrations where a 3D picture is hidden in a two-dimensional one, or a figure around, I'm sorry, a figure ground optical illusion, such as the one that can be seen either as a wine goblet or as two faces looking at one another. You are seeing it one way, suddenly you are seeing it another way. And when you see it one way, you cannot see it the other way. Just so is the miracle. It inverts your perception. You were seeing it one way, now you see it the other. You can't make it happen, but when it happens, you know it. 
Thank you so much for joining with me in Lesson 344. Today I learned the law of love that what I give my brother is my gift to me. I love you. Thank you.